While the African slave trade remains a well-known historical tragedy, there exists another dark chapter obscured from history's spotlight, the enslavement of over a million white Europeans by Barbary pirates. Operating along the coast of North Africa and the Ottoman Empire, these pirates mercilessly targeted ships and villages across Spain, Italy, France, England, Iceland, and Ireland. Captured victims were ruthlessly sold in markets throughout Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya, consigning to them a life of indescribable misery and suffering. Lasting from the 16th to the 19th centuries, the Barbary slave trade was a brutal, harrowing practice that impacted the lives of both blacks and whites. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today, we delve into the depths of the disturbing truth about the white slave trade. The towns along the Barbary coast of North Africa had been known for their active slave markets since Roman times. This continued into the medieval period. The influence of the Barbary coast increased in the 15th century when the Ottoman Empire took control of the region. There was also an influx of Sephardic Jews and Moorish refugees newly expelled from Spain after the Christian reconquest there. With Ottoman backing and a flood of destitute immigrants, the Barbary Coast became notorious for piracy. Ships were routinely seized and crews were either ransomed or sold into slavery. Between 1580 and 1680, there were around 15,000 Christian Europeans who converted to Islam and became pirates known as renegades. About half the Barbary pirate captains were renegades, while others were likely immigrants looking for opportunity rather than escaped slaves. The pirates frequently raided coastal settlements in Italy, Spain, Portugal, England, and Ireland during the 15th century. They stole goods and belongings from boats they seized. Some pirates were not satisfied with just stealing cargo. Gangs would land on unguarded beaches and sneak into seaside villages at night to kidnap people and sell them into slavery. One particular horrific example was the raid on the Irish village of Baltimore in 1631. Trade during the 17th century experienced significant growth, with its impact spreading far beyond the Mediterranean coasts. One notable event that fueled this expansion occurred in 1631, when the entire population of Baltimore, a village in Ireland, mysteriously vanished. The disappearance sparked fear among nearby towns and villages, prompting many to evacuate their settlements as a precautionary measure. During the 13th and 14th centuries, Christian pirates hailing from Catalonia and Sicily disguised themselves as merchants along the Barbary shore. Although their intentions were far from noble, their actions posed a serious threat to genuine merchants, particularly as the Ottoman Empire expanded its influence in the 15th century. The name Barbary does not refer to barbarians. Barbary comes from the word Berber, which is the name for the non-Arab native peoples of the northern African coast. The Berbers had been fierce warriors and raiders on land for a long time. When many of the Berber tribes started to sail and became pirates in the late 1400s and early 1500s, they were joined by Muslim and Jewish refugees. These refugees were fleeing or had been forced out of Spain as the Spanish Christians reconquered the areas ruled by Arabs and Muslims for hundreds of years. The Mediterranean was the center of trade between Europe, Africa, and Asia. Ships carried spices, gold, jewels, cloth, food, and many other goods through the sea between ports. The Barbary pirates wanted to capture some of this valuable cargo. They would raid ships and steal or demand payment for the goods. The pirates focused especially on European ships carrying things like spices from the Middle East and India, or crops like cotton and olives grown around the Mediterranean. The Barbary pirates were not only Muslims from the Ottoman Empire. In the 1500s, the pirates included people of many races, ethnic groups, and religions. 
crews had Berbers, Arabs, Turks, Africans, Jews, Orthodox Christians, Catholics, Protestants, and more. Some of the pirates were Europeans who chose to convert to Islam. Records show that between 1580 and 1680, about 15,000 Christian Europeans became pirates and converted, called renegades. Around half of the Barbary pirate captains may have originally been these renegade Europeans. Others likely started as poor immigrants looking for ways to make money in North Africa. European paintings from the 1600s often portrayed the pirates attacking European villages and ships as being Muslim Turks capturing white Christian victims. But the reality was that the North African pirates focused on valuable ships to loot, not on the race or religion of those they captured. They held European and American sailors for ransom or sold them as slaves in North African markets. Some of the Barbary pirate leaders worked with European nations when it served their interests. For example, English pirate John Ward, also called Jack Ward, started as a privateer sanctioned by Queen Elizabeth to attack Spanish ships. But then he turned full pirate, converted to Islam, and led Barbary raids on English and Irish towns. An Arab woman pirate named Saida Halhura became governor of a Moroccan city. She married the Moroccan king and led pirate attacks allied with the famous Barbary Corsair brothers. Privateers turned pirates helped provide the ships and weapons that let the North African fleets become powerful in the Mediterranean. Upon arrival at the Barbary Coast slave markets, able-bodied captured men faced a bleak and exhausting future. Endless toil and hardship awaited them, with grueling labor becoming their daily reality. Some were assigned to the treacherous mines that stretched from the coast into the scorching Sahara Desert. There they endured thirst-inducing work under the relentless sun and arid conditions. Others, skilled in shipbuilding, were compelled to utilize their talents for the pirates' gain, constructing and repairing vessels. However, for most captives, life meant an endless cycle of backbreaking menial tasks, hauling goods, cleaning, and performing various manual jobs. Their days were an unending ordeal of constant toil, with scarcely a moment of respite. But the very worst fate for captured men was when they ended up chained to the oars of the dreaded Barbary Coast galleys. The life of a galley slave was usually quite short, as they rarely lasted more than a few years, as well as being utterly miserable until death finally came. The slaves were physically chained to their owing benches and also to the long, heavy oars that they strained to pull through the water all day long. They were never allowed to leave their oars, even for a moment's rest. That meant, in addition to rowing hour after endless hour and often being beaten or whipped by the crew to keep them rowing, the enslaved oarsmen were also forced to eat their meager meals of rotted fish, remains, and stale vegetables right at the rowing benches. The chained slaves were compelled to stay at their oars constantly, whether in calm seas or violent storms. They did not have any cushions or protection from the hard wood against their backsides and legs. Worst of all was the fact that galley slaves could never be unchained even to relieve themselves. The slaves had no choice but to urinate and defecate right there at their oars. Over time, their bodies and the benches they sat on became filthy and coated with layers of human waste until a rainstorm might come and wash some of the mess away, or the stench grew so terrible that the crew finally doused the area with seawater. As one can well imagine, the slaves' constant friction against the oars tore at their hands until they were raw and bloody. Their bare feet were worn down from pushing against the deck. Their buttocks and thighs were chafed raw from the hard benches. This meant the slaves often suffered from open cuts, sores, and torn skin, which led to widespread infections, diseases, and ultimately death for many. During the 1500s, galleys had begun to equip smaller primitive cannons, but their primary combat strategy still relied on close-range boarding and hand-to-hand -hand combat with enemy ships. For pirate galleys venturing into battle, their captive slaves faced a harrowing fate. 
Forced to row toward the enemy amidst the deafening sounds of cannons and musket fire, these unfortunate souls waited helplessly on their benches, surrounded by the terror of combat. Their lives hung in the battle, entirely at the mercy of the battle's outcome. Aiding to their agony, should their ship suffer damage or sink during the fight, the chain slaves would drown while still shackled to their benches, dragged down to the depths of the sea. What became of the multitudes of European slaves captured by Barbary Coast pirates remains uncertain. Most likely, survivors fled to remote regions to evade recapture, but the notorious North African slave trade finally ended in the 19th century after centuries of operation. Many European naval powers tried to suppress the Barbary pirates and protect their trade and citizens in the Mediterranean Sea, but with limited success. The United States, which had also suffered from the pirate attacks, waged two wars against the Barbary states in 1801 through 1805 and 1815. These wars resulted in the liberation of many American prisoners and the reduction of tribute payments. However, the decisive blow to the Barbary pirates came from a joint Anglo-Dutch expedition in 1816 which bombarded Algiers and forced the Dey of Algiers to agree to end the enslavement of Christians and release over 3,000 slaves. France, which had also been involved in several conflicts with the Barbary states, invaded and occupied Algiers in 1830, ending its independence. France also extended its control over Tunis in 1881, while Italy annexed Libya, which included Tripoli, in 1912 after a war with the Ottoman Empire. The colonial occupation of North Africa by European powers marked the end of the Barbary slave trade and piracy. The former slaves gained their freedom and rights under the new laws. The Barbary Coast, which had once terrorized Europe and America for centuries, was finally subdued. If you want more of history's long-held secrets and darkest confessions, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. From us at Bizarre History, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.